This planet's called the jewel of the solar system. Made up mostly of gases, it could float on water should you find a reservoir 75,000 miles across and just as deep. But what makes the planet so recognizable is its beautiful rings, gray, tan, and beige. They consist of dust, rocks, and ice. Some bits are as tiny as grains of sand, others as large as skyscrapers. The planet I'm talking about is Saturn, and right now, Earth is hurtling toward it at breakneck speed. It all started on a regular day over half a year ago. All of a sudden, Earth changed the course it had been following for several billion years. But instead of rushing towards the Sun, it started to move away from the star. On second thoughts, it might be for the better. We've got more time to find a solution. Earth used to move around the Sun at a speed of 67,000 miles per hour. For some mysterious reason, when it left its orbit, the speed remained the same. It means we're going to cover 746 million miles separating our planet from Saturn within a year and three months. At first, no one realized what had happened. But a couple of hours later, it became obvious. Despite the panic that engulfed Earth's inhabitants, nothing seemed to be out of the ordinary. But all too soon, it started to get colder and colder. Astronomers' forecasts were pessimistic. People started to leave their homes at the poles, move closer to the equator. Most plant and animal species were having a hard time. Some of them went extinct, even though we were trying to save them in greenhouses and special conservation parks. The sky changed dramatically. In a week, we could see Mars clearly. It looked like a big reddish sphere hanging low over our heads. Jupiter became as bright as the moon. Once Earth was as far away from the sun as Mars, days became twice dimmer than they used to be. At first, our planet's atmosphere was acting as a barrier between people and space. That's why we didn't feel the cold immediately. But seven days later, everyone who dared to leave their home had to be cocooned in heavy winter clothing. By that time, the temperatures had already dropped down to minus 145 degrees Fahrenheit. It got even colder once our planet passed Mars and hurried through the asteroid belt. It's been one of the most dangerous regions on our way so far. Yes, people could admire awesome meteorite showers streaking the sky. But several space bodies managed to get through the Earth's atmosphere. They slammed into the ground, flattening mountains and leaving behind gigantic craters. They caused tsunamis and triggered earthquakes. Right now, most of the planet, including the oceans, has already turned into an icy desert. There's a lack of food and natural resources. We've built underground towns and tunnels connecting them. Our scientists work day and night to find a way out of this situation. If they don't, that's what's going to happen. The closer our planet will be to Saturn, the more the ring planet will loom over the horizon and the larger it'll look. Soon, it'll already shine brighter than the full moon. The massive yellowish-brown orb will be visible even during the day, but it'll look especially impressive at night. Instead of sleeping, Millions of people will spend hours watching Saturn grow larger and larger. One day, the distance between the two planets will become the same as the distance between Earth and Mars used to be. Saturn's disk will be about a quarter the size of the full moon. Its rings will be as large as two-thirds of our natural satellite. Soon after that, our planet's speed will start to increase under the influence of Saturn's gravitational pull. The ringed planet is 9 times wider than Earth, and its mass is almost 100 times greater. That's why, instead of moving at a speed of 29 miles per second, we'll be dashing through space at almost 40 miles per second. That's 2,400 times the average car speed. Saturn's gravity will influence the Moon more than that of Earth. In no time, we'll lose our satellite. It'll get catapulted into outer space, likely to go into an elliptical orbit around the Sun. If Earth wasn't about to crash into Saturn in the nearest future, the Moon could one day cross paths with our planet again. No good would come out of such an encounter. But what's happening on Saturn's side of things? Saturn is one of the largest planets in the solar system, second only to Jupiter. Even though the rings surrounding the planet are huge, they're rather thin, less than a mile thick. Still, the main rings are large enough to stretch from Earth to the Moon. But how did the planet get these breathtaking accessories? 
Beyond the outer edge of the main rings A, B, and C, there's something astronomers call the F-ring. Several million years old, it's the weirdest one. This constantly shifting ring is made up of icy material and is incredibly complex. Its curves, twists, and clumps of brighter substance make it look as if it's braided. Saturn has more than 50 confirmed moons. Two of them, Pandora and Prometheus, flank the F-ring on either side. They weave outside and inside the ring, acting like shepherds. They herd ice particles into a 60-mile-thick band. But why are they performing this elaborate dance? No one knows. What scientists do know is that when Saturn's rings were evolving, icy material clumped together and formed moonlets. Some of them grew and turned into the planet's largest moons. But two of them collided. That's how the mysterious ring F appeared. If the moonlets had only been made up of small, icy particles, the space collision would have left a ring and nothing else. But they had dense, rocky cores. Those remained intact and turned into Pandora and Prometheus. People don't have any evidence Saturn's ever collided with another space body. Our Earth might be the first. But before crashing into the planet itself, we'll have to get through its rings, including the Ring F. And no, our planet won't just punch a hole in them. Saturn's rings are made of small particles. Earth's gravity will start to pull some of them out of their orbit once we're close enough. It'll result in a long plume that will reach our planet. And later, when we squeeze through, the cloud of icy particles will drag after Earth. It won't have enough power to rid Saturn of its rings completely, though. They'll continue to move around their home planet, but their orbits will change and become more elongated. There will be no more stunning bands. Over time, the rings could probably settle down again, but Earth won't give them such a chance. The collision with our planet won't leave Saturn unscathed. If there's still a possibility to sneak a peek at the sky, people will be able to see the rings disappear into nothingness, but not for long. Soon, the largest chunks of rock will start hitting the surface of our planet, leaving behind lifeless land dotted with craters. In the worst-case scenario, Earth might even collide with one of Saturn's numerous moons. But let's imagine we've passed through this region in one piece, and now our planet's very close to Saturn. The gas giant might seem airy, but there's no way Earth can fly through the huge sphere and leave from the other side. Gravity is what keeps all that gas together. The very gravity that make our planet speed up. The closer it is to the much bigger space body, the stronger the pull is. It'll cause the fault lines on Earth to rupture. It'll also set off powerful volcanic eruptions all over the world. And then, with enormous force, our planet will crash into Saturn. The planet's atmospheres will get compressed. This will cause a dramatic and fast temperature rise, and in no time, the air will be on fire. Scientists claim that Saturn's core is dense, made up of iron and nickel, and surrounded by a rocky layer. But we'll never make it there. Earth will burn in the bigger planet's atmosphere after being literally torn apart. Our beautiful, blue-green world will turn into billions of trillions of tons of vaporized rock. Pity. Maybe Earth will become yet another Saturn's ring, instead of the ones it's ruined. Sounds grim, I know. Yeah, we can't save Earth from Saturn, but that's only a bad dream. So maybe we take that effort and save us from a real threat, climate change. Eh, just saying.